What is going on guys and welcome back to the Young and Intelligent Investing channel. If this is your first time here, I make stock market videos mainly focusing around the Robinhood app and trying to make some good money at a young early age and basically give tips for all investors. Today I want to focus on just showing off what's inside my portfolio because I haven't really done an update in a while and I want to show you guys what I have going in, on in my portfolio and it, that's done really well for me. So first of all, I want to say that I've had $4,000 invested in Robinhood total. You guys can see I started out over here and I'm up 376.74 all time. That's subject to change right now because throughout the video, I can just stay right there up to 77 because we are in active trading hours. But I just want to show off some of the stocks I have for you guys that have performed well for me and that I think are going to perform well, well for the rest of the year as, as tech's kind of been down lately and other like more more non-tech stocks have been up in the last few days and I think that's going to continue to be the trend because tech's been really hot but I think it's going to go into a little bit of a bear cycle for a, just a little while. So if you guys like buy stock tips please consider subscribing and I'm going to be putting out as many videos as I can just kind of sharing my knowledge with you guys and wanting to learn from you guys as well. So leave some comments down below on what you guys think. So first of all my one of my biggest positions is SPY here which is an S&P 500 uh, ETF by SPDR. I am up $92 here and 9.5%. Definitely one of my best investments and it just investing in the S&P is such a good idea for anybody who's new. And I have VOO, also an S&P 500 ETF. This one's Vanguard so it has a smaller expense ratio so I would definitely recommend going into this over SPY. The only reason I still have SPY is because I like being able to track my my position over a long period of time and that messes up these bottom percentages down here so I'm gonna keep that in SPY pretty much forever. Next up I have DIA which is a another SPDR ETF which it tracks the Dow and another thing I love about this is that it puts out monthly dividends which is always so satisfying to see. I'm about 14.4 percent on this position which is great in my book one of my best investments. Next I have QQQ which tracks the NASDAQ and which is most of the tech stocks as you can see getting killed over the last couple of weeks up over the last month about a percent but as you can see lately it's been straight downhill up 5.2 percent on this position nothing too special there just a small position next up is one of my favorites SPHD which is a PowerShares S&P 500 high dividend low volatility ETF so it basically takes the highest dividend payers and matches them with matches the lowest volatility. I'm up 6.24% on this, but that does not show the whole story because it spits me out dividends every single month that really boosts my portfolio. It's got about a 4% dividend yield, which is just awesome to add to the portfolio. And it's great to see 4% coming in, not 4% every month, but it's great to see those monthly coal bucks coming in. Oh, and next up I have OUSA, which is the O shares. I wouldn't really recommend this for anybody. I just kind of did this for fun because I was actually, this is the Kevin O'Leary ETF, and I actually had the privilege of meeting him last year. So I figured I'd put something in just to, and just track how that did against the S&P. I'm up 7.14%. And it also pays a monthly dividend, just a small one, but it's kind of cool to have. Next up is SDIV. Another monthly dividend ETF. This one's more global and it's extremely high dividend with an 8.1% yield. So I'm down 0.9% on this position, but I've got a lot of dividends that have come in for this, so I'm up overall. Next up is BRKB, Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett. Never hurts putting money with him. I'm up 12.23% on this position, which is great. Only bad part is it, it does not give a dividend. Next up is AVV, which is a dividend aristocrat. It's increased its dividend for 25 years straight now, including its split from Abbott Labs. I'm up 59%, $59 or 44.64% on this position, which is fantastic for me. It's easily my highest position, and I've only been in the stock market about seven or eight months. 3.75% yield, and they just keep raising that guy. I've gotten two dividends from this, and both $1.28. Next up, Apple. Hard to go wrong with the biggest stock out there, especially with all the good they've been doing. I'm up 13.33% on this position. Next up, AMT. I've pretty much lost all of the gains I've had from this. I'm only up 0.6%, which is a bummer, but look at this chart. It went 
straight up. I bought in around here, around here, went down a little bit further, then I went way up to about 152, 153, and now it's right back down to 140. So I'm hoping this is going to be good for long term. It's a cell phone tower company, so and it's going global. So I think there's big growth potential, and it pays out a lot of dividends as it is a REIT, and it has to pay out 90% for certain tax advantages. Next up is Pepsi. I believe I'm down. Yeah, I'm down 32 uh, cents on this position. 35 cents. Uh, I've held this for a few months now. I pretty much bought in at the peak, and it's just now getting back to where it was after a big dip. But I've been getting dividends, so I'm got no problem with that. But 240 in dividends. Next up is O. I just recently sold off a few shares here because it is a. Uh, it's a real estate stock and it is focused in retail and while it does have real estate like it does have like resistant uh, to e-commerce tenants I still think this space is gonna kind of go down and down as e-commerce goes up and up I'm up 0 0.42 on this position but it gives me monthly dividends so I'm definitely up a lot on that position next up is SUI I just recently picked up Sun Communities which is basically a manufactured home communities uh, REIT, which is very cool, I think, because of the retention rate, and it's pretty stable. Like, I really don't expect this thing to blow up, but I also don't expect this thing, like, that thing's never going to crash. I highly doubt. Next up is Microsoft, down 2.5% today, unfortunately, but I'm still up 14.67% on the position. Then Starbucks. Starbucks has taken a big dip from where it was, but it's getting close to back up, up there. I'm up, down 3.8% on the position, unfortunately, and it's up 2.8% today, which is nice. Stag is an industrial REIT. I own two shares of one of the first stocks I got into. It's got a monthly dividend. I'm up about 11% on this stock. KO, Coca-Cola. Everybody knows Coke. Up 6.3% there. Bowson, which is an uh, e-commerce play. It's a big partner with Alibaba. I'm down 25% on this, unfortunately. It's taken a huge dip. Shout out to shout out to Dollars and Cents. He uh, turned me out of the stock right before it dipped 25%, but he's got confidence in it, so I've got confidence in it. I, I bet it'll come back eventually, but it's not a huge deal just because of how small of a position it is. It's only 0.64% of my portfolio. I just kind of did, threw money in there for fun. Bank of America Corp. This one's been great for me. I'm up 18% on it, and which is very, very good for me. Got a low dividend yield, but it's been performing really well this year. And lastly, I've got APLE, which is a hospitality REIT. I'm up about 2.5% on this, and it gives me monthly dividends. So as you guys can see, my portfolio is not very tech-based, but... I've had a lot of success with it this year, up 9.5% all time, which I'm very happy with. It's in less than a year, if you guys can tell. It's probably about two-thirds of a year, so I'm, I'm having great success, and I'd love for you guys to kind of have that success with me. So please leave a like, comment, and tell me how my, what you think about my portfolio, where I can add, where I can sell off. And you guys have a great day. Please consider subscribing, and see ya.